In the past, surgeon performance was monitored at the hospital level but kept secret from the public. In 2015, there was a change in the Medicare data made available to researchers. The surgeon field that had been previously encrypted was now visible. ProPublica is a nonprofit news organization that produces investigative journalism in the public interest. ProPublica took this new surgeon data and published a surgeon source scorecard of individual surgeon complication rates for eight inpatient procedures. They published their method for calculating the surgical complication rates but did not provide any source code. The goal of this effort is to create an open algorithm for evaluation of surgical performance and publish the source code. The OMOP medical data standard is used in the hope that researchers around the world are able to calculate and publish the scorecard for their own countries. I'm currently living in Finland where there's free public health care and I think they would never publish this data. The pool of surgeons is very small for a country of 5 million people and there may not be the resources to complete surgeries if patients refuse to be treated by the poor performers. It raises philosophical questions that are going to need to be asked now that the data has been published in the first country. Do patients have the right to know if they have an unusually high chance of death or complication when going to a routine surgery? Are the regulatory agencies functioning properly in removing those surgeons with unusually high complication rates? The data used is the Medicare 2008 to 2010 Data Entrepreneur SINPUF converted to an OMAP format. I would have liked to use real data that had been de-identified at the patient level but left the surgeon name intact. The data is available for researchers but the cost is in the low hundreds of thousands. It also requires extra justification to get the full 100% data set. This is blocking researchers interested in volunteering their time to do benevolent research. The complete SINPUF data had 2.32 million patients but I eliminated those from the cohort that did not have a hospital visit leaving 1.88 million patients. Similar to the original ProPublica study, eight elective inpatient procedures were selected. These included hip replacement, knee replacement, three types of spinal fusion, gallbladder removal, prostate removal, and prostate resections. 80,888 index procedures were identified. There were 893 readmissions and death within the 30-day window following an index procedure. The surgeon complication rate was calculated as the total number of procedures divided by the sum of complications and deaths that occurred within 30 days of the surgery. Due to the size of the data involved, it was decided to use big data technology algorithms like MapReduce. Spark was chosen for the implementation with the coding done in Python. Python Pandas was sometimes used for processing data. Two reusable software components were developed. The first is called Cohort, and it allows filtering of an OMOP format data set to select the patients of interest. The second component is called Readmissions. It takes a cohort created with the cohort component and then detects complications such as death or hospital readmission within a configurable time window. Lack of open source libraries for creating relationships between medical codes and comorbidities forced me to limit the algorithm to only creating raw complication rates instead of adjusting them for the comor comorbidities as the ProPublica study had done. The CMS ETL is a set of scripts that convert the Medicare format to the OMAP data format. I needed to correct a mapping defect in the code related to concept type ID, which is the field used to detect a primary admission. Without the correction, the in amount of index procedure counts were off by a factor of 10. 32-bit limitations in the source code of Spark caused the application to crash when calculating the raw complication rates of the surgeons. The binary was passed with a fix to remove the th these 32-bit limitations. After that, the scorecard ran successfully. The scorecard was able to successfully calculate the raw surgical complication rates on the synthetic data set. The procedures and complication counts were similar to those found by ProPublica, as you can see from the SINPUF figures adjusted for data size and study length. Similar to the ProPublica study, many surgeons had only a few index procedures, which makes it difficult to make any comment on their raw complication percentage. This is because Medicare patients are typically a small proportion of the surgeries done by a surgeon. There are 52.5 million individuals on Medicare, but 319 million prospective patients in the United States, so we only have data for about one-sixth of the potential index procedures. There is no visibility into these other surgeries done with private insurance since the data is not public. The mapping of the condition and procedure type ID was not correct in the CMS ETL. I entered a defect against the code and provided a fix. More open source medical libraries are needed especially related to medical code conversion. The source data I used was medical claims data. Another source of data could be medical records. 
without real data, it's difficult to know if the scorecard will function properly in all cases. I want to work with researchers who have access to real data sets. I would like to give thanks to Professor Sun and the teaching assistants. I think more students would choose an OHDSI project if there were ideas provided for new applications like Surgeon's Scorecard. There's a big learning curve on the existing OHDSI applications, so most students that were interested poke around and end up just selecting another project category. I'm not even sure I would have completed the app correctly if someone from the OHDSI had not written a detailed post in the forums about what tables I would need to look at for the study or how to tell what is the inpatient primary admission ICD code. The OHDSI group could come up with a list of needed projects similar to the Google Summer of Code for students to implement or extend.